the Noctia NHP1, one of and maybe even the most unique CPU cooler Noctia has released so far. Standing 158 mm tall, this thing is one giant block of aluminum composed of 13 1.3 mm thick aluminum fins and 6 heat pipes going from the nickel plated copper base all the way up and through the enormous freaking heatsink. Looking from the top, the sheer size becomes even more impressive because it's almost one big cube. Every fin is about 154 mm wide and if you calculate all of them together and add the outsticking heat pipe, including the tip at the end, we end up with about 151 mm, making this a perfect cube for people with short-sightedness. It's actually so ridiculously big and heavy that I will need to hold it for the whole review. It's There is no position in, in which it will stand. It's yeah, I, I just need to keep it like that. But we all know that it's not the size that makes the P1 as impressive as it is. It is the fact that this thing is built from the ground up for passive operation, meaning no fan. Yes, this is Noctia's first and hopefully not last 100% passive cooler. From the surprisingly thick fins capable of withstanding extreme temperatures for a very long time to the unseen thick gaps in between them so that the whole cooler is capable of pushing the heat out to the surrounding air without creating any resistance whatsoever so that the natural heat convection can do its job. Everything about this is passive. But there is more. To maximize air movement, there are additional holes in every fin allowing the air to move through the cooler in whatever orientation it is installed. As Noctia said themselves, no noise, less dust, 100% fail-proof, that is, if you install it correctly. Compatibility-wise, the P1 can be mounted on basically everything thanks to Noxia reusing the same mounting mechanic over and over and over again. From the latest and greatest LGA 1700, we can go all the way back to the older 1150s, 2066 and 2011 for Team Intel. Over on AMD, we are looking at the newest AM5 and older AM4s. Inside the usual Noxia styled box, we'll not only find the giant cube of aluminum, but also the mounting material and a few extras, one of which is the all-new Noctia screwdriver. But don't be too excited yet, because you will only use it for this cooler and this cooler alone and nothing else. Yes, although the installation methods are one-to-one -one the same thing as on any other Noctia cooler right now, this particular one uses hex screws instead of Phillips, which is why Noctia includes the screwdriver for that. And I'm not 100% sure why they did this. I, or My understanding goes that hex screws are in general better. Like they tend to last longer given that you screw them in and out more than once. But everybody sticks to Phillips heads. Like for decades. Nobody cared. Noctia never cared. And now suddenly they do. The only explanation I can come up with is that you can put more force onto the screw without the risk of messing up the screw as fast, but that's just a wild guess. But, but hey, at least the screwdriver is very, very premium instead of just a simple Allen wrench. Speaking of which, let's go over the installation. On an AM5, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with Noxia's AMD brackets in an inwards pointing position and the gray spacers in between. And for Intel, we need to take the provided backplate, shove the Intel screws through the holes according to your socket, outer ones for 1700 and inner ones for 1200 and 1150s, with the caption tags pointing up and secure them using the clip-ins on the other side. After positioning it behind the motherboard, slap the spacers on top, blue for LGA 1700 and black for the older ones, and then position the Intel brackets symmetrically and with their ends pointing outwards and then screw them down. And then we can proceed to screw in the biggest chunk of heatsink I have ever held in my hands by shoving the screwdriver in between the third and fourth fin, counting from the heat pipes. 
And in case you have RAM taller than 40 millimeters, just flip it. Because yes, depending on the cooler's orientation, we are looking at a 100% RAM compatibility. For the cube cooler, what the heck? When it comes to potential performance, it's, it's such a complicated topic because this thing comes without a fan. Every little most tiny thing will affect its performance. How much air restriction does your case have? Can the air escape to the top? What's your ambient temperature? Does the case even have a fan? And so on and so on. Everything you can think of will affect how this thing will perform. Noxia offers a relatively good compatibility list for their coolers. And on there you can also check if the P1 can handle your chip. However, do not expect it to work at the rated boost clock. Pretty much every CPU you will look for, assuming it's less than 3 years old, will only be able to keep up with the base clock. This means give it a minute or two and you are looking at a hot thermal throttle. The rule of thumb I have seen all over the place is if the chip burns more than 100 watts, it will clock itself down. And unfortunately, I can confirm that. Although it took some time, but our 135 watt CPU cooler benchmark machine did not manage to complete a full test. It thermal throttled hard. However, have you seen these little holes marked with a number that Nokia drilled into each fin? Because yes, it, the holes are in every fin. Like, it's the same fin over and over again. Except for the Nokia logo. Only the last one has the Nokia logo. Anyway, these holes are for fans, or for one fan. Nokia does in fact include a set of mounting clips for fans for the P1. They do so because although the cooler is designed for passive operation, slapping a fan on top of it makes it perform drastically better. So drastically in fact that Nokia themselves are saying that a bunch of chips are able to keep up with boost clock. You can install a fan on three different locations, either on the top using the holes marked with two, or on the right or left of the Nokia logo, left would be hole one and right would be hole number three. Or holes number three. The fan that Noctua suggests that you should be using is their low speed version of the NF-A12X25. Now I don't have the fan, nor do I really want it because I don't really like, like, strangle down fans, I like the full speed version and then just throw it down. But what I do have is a regular Noxia NF-A12X25 and a low speed adapter. Now this is not fully according to Noxia's recommendations because using these two in combination will yield you a 1700 RPM, which is quite a bit more than the 1200 RPM that the low speed version pushes. However, performance. Using the 1700 RPM throttled A12X25 in combination with the P1 pushed that thing onto our benchmark chart. At 60.7 degrees C above ambient, the P1 managed to outperform a bunch of coolers spinning at their max speed, like for example the AMD Roth Prism or even the Asa Blizzard 120. While that's already impressive, in the first place, a 1700 RPM quick A12 is not loud, not at all. So quiet in fact that the noise to performance ratio outperformed a Montec Air 210, a NHL 12S or a Roth Prism by miles. But don't think we just cracked the code here. Add a Noxia NHD 15 to that and uh, yeah, these lines never even touch. The hottest point that a Noxia NHD 15 can get at 30% fan speed is far away from the best AP1 with a throttle down A12 could go. But still, this is impressive. So impressive in fact that I just removed the low noise adapter and try to find out if we can push it even further and uh, no. As fun as this could have been, there is a good reason Noxia recommends using a 1200 RPM quick A12X25 in combination with this P1. For a win of 1.1 degrees C above ambient, the noise you are adding is truly not worth it. But because slapping fans onto this thing was so much fun, why stop? So we continued to install randomly chosen fans on the P1 just to find out how they would perform. And as it turns out, the differences are really not that big. If you look at the fans we have used, it is clear that the P1 favors high airflow fans, but funnily enough, 
once you go beyond asking and you start to force huge amounts of air through them with like extreme pressure, the benefit will become quite a bit more. Up to 55.8 degrees C to be exact using a 3000 RPM quick Silent Wing 4 Pro. That's 5 degrees less than the 1700 RPM quick A12, which is just interesting to see. Anyway, I, I was disappointed by my time with the P1, not because of the cooler, no, this is this thing is awesome. It is, you need to know what you are doing, but if you plan everything accordingly and you know the limits of the cooler and you know how your chip will perform or how, how it generates heat, you will have a very, very silent time, followed by a lot of coil wine. No, I just really wanted to somehow position it on my cooler benchmark list. I never expected it to outperform anything, but at least like some value for a passive cooler, just for orientation to know where it would stand. And I had an idea. The reason why we stop our benchmark charts at 70 degrees C above ambient is because we have at least 25 degrees C ambient temperature inside of this room. Yes, I know it's ridiculously hot, but about a meter 25 of every room of the studio is beneath ground. So the windows are like glued to the ground level. Uh, plus, welcome to a house built in Europe after 2015, isolated as fuck, and if you have stuff generating heat, you just won't get it out. It's, it's incredibly hot in here. But what if I do find a way to get it out? What if I find a way to lower the ambient temperature to a point where I can expand my graph? All the numbers are above ambient, so they are still going to be correct, but my hottest point might become reachable without thermal throttling the CPU. So my journey began. First, I tried the legendary technique I learned during my time abroad in Germany, Stoßlüfte. But this still wasn't enough. So I installed a bunch of Noctua Industria A14 fans right next to the open window and uh, a fan I found in my parents' basement that looks like my mom still had to buy it with like ration cards back in communist Poland, but that still wasn't enough. So I had to rebuild the air extractor, a device I have invented last summer because I had to stop filming once the spotlights in here heated the room upwards of 30 degrees C. And time for another try. And yes, subtracting the now much lower ambient temperature showed that the P1 can keep a 130 watts workload at 84.8 degrees C above the ambient. So if you have an ambient temperature of less than 10 degrees C, you will be able to use the P1 whilst gaming on an average CPU. What a success. Overall, it is one of the most interesting coolers I have seen. Of course, I would have never used it on an average CPU, that you would buy nowadays for gaming or at least not without an additional fan. This is made for the small performance ultra quiet build. i3, an oversized GPU to make sure the fans never even start and a thousand watts power supply with start stop. Nothing is spinning and you can use the PC at zero decibels. Really really interesting but you need to know what you are doing. This is not just to buy and see what happens. Bad things will happen. Or you slap a fan on there, then mediocre things will happen. But okay, this was it for my adventure with the Nokia NHP1 and the ancient technique of Stoßlüfter. At this point, a huge thank you to Nokia for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you wanna join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your store for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to probably invest in an aftermarket air conditioner. It's end April right now, and this means that in a month or two, something like this would just not have been possible whatsoever. Anyway, thank you for watching, but if you want to continue, take a look at our take on the Noxia NHU-12A, still one of my favorite coolers. Hope to see you on the next one, bye bye.